Welcome to Inner West Library and History. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today, the Gadigal and Wangal people of the Eora Nation, and pay our deepest respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Today's presentation is part of our digital series, Women in Gaming, exploring and celebrating the various roles of local women in game development, be it coding and programming, game writing, composing music for games, or graphics and game art. We hope you enjoy learning about these incredible women and are inspired to consider a career in this ever expanding and fascinating realm. Enjoy. My name is Inga Plomer. I'm a chapter lead at Immutable here in Sydney. It's a game studio. I am a regular speaker at uh, conferences all across Australia. I'm a winner of Women in Tech competition 2017, and I also have a corgi. His name is Einstein, and he's adorable. So I guess if you watch any of my public talks, you'll probably see his photos. <laughs> this is an interesting question, because at Immutable, we um, approach quality assurance in a bit of different way than a lot of other studios because our testers are actually part of our engineering team, so they're all very technical. There is this uh, feeling in the industry that if you want to be a game tester, you just come in, you play the game all the time and you get paid for that. <laughs> That's definitely not what we're doing. All of our testers are very technical. They write automated tests, they validate user journey, and they work very close with our developers. Yes and no. Um, I mean, it's a pretty new industry in the sense that standards change a lot. And as technology develops, we have a lot of more new stuff to explore and use. So you can always learn it. Uh, if you want to learn it, it's up to you. Um, I moved to Australia seven years ago. Before that, I had a completely different career. Uh, I was a um, writer. I have several books published in Russia, but when I moved to Australia, I decided, okay, I want to do something else with my life. And that's how uh, I got into the game industry. I had no experience. I had a completely different background and a completely different degree. So what I did, I went uh, to uni to study computer science. And at the same time, I started uh, looking for a job in the industry. Uh, and I started as a contract tester. That's like the lowest position you can get in the industry. And I just slowly build myself up, uh, learning new things, exploring new tech. And yeah, that's how I got where I am. Um, it was a very, I guess, it was a pretty fast journey. Um, uh, I got where I am in five years or so. So from the lowest level of the test, the contract tester to the chapter lead, it took me about five years. But uh, I guess I was very lucky in my journey. I had a lot of support. I had amazing mentors. Also, uh, my degree that I got from RMIT was very technical. And if you're wondering where to go for a technical degree, I would recommend RMIT because they teach you a lot of stuff that you can apply in the real world. So yeah, it took me about five years uh, and I would say that's fast, but you can do it if you want to. No, it was an online degree. I did it via Open University because I was here in Sydney and the university is in Melbourne. So um, I had to have my exams uh, in person here in Sydney. But still, I, the, only, um, the, on, the one time that I had to go for Melbourne, for, to Melbourne was for my graduation. That's it. How do you advise someone else to become a game developer? First, you need to honestly ask yourself, is that something that you want to do? Because this job requires commitment. Uh, this job requires a lot of knowledge and it's not just technical knowledge because we're dealing with a product that people play. So there are players journeys, uh, there are player development, there are all of those things that actually create an experience. 
So I guess the first question you need to ask yourself is, do I want to create experiences? And if you do, then you ask yourself in which role you want to create them. Because there are a lot of different jobs in game development. Uh, you can be a narrative designer, the person who creates the story. You can be a game designer, the person who creates game, me game mechanics. You can be a game developer, uh, which means write code and make things happen in the game engine. You can be a producer, you can be a marketing person. So we have a lot of different jobs in the industry. You just need to decide what you want to do. Uh, right now, uh, I am a technical leader, uh, which means our automation chapter as a part of engineering, we write a lot of code. We solve interesting technical problems. Uh, and that's something that excites me a lot because I am very technical myself uh, and it allows me to apply my talents to a very interesting product. Yes, but it's an interesting story. Because I was a writer uh, in Russia, there was actually a computer game developed based on my books. And I played that game and that's what got me interested in game development. Like I always had an interest in games because I was always a player just playing different games on my computer. But um, that's when I thought, huh, you can actually make games, not just play them. And that's when uh, it was a time for me to maybe change careers. When I moved to Australia, I thought, hmm, this is what excites me. That's what I want to explore. Well, uh, I am a writer of teen fiction, which means young adult stories uh, for girls. I had a book series called Padrushki. Uh, it means girlfriends. Uh, there were four main, char main characters and they had all the different adventures across uh, Russian capital. Uh, and yeah, it was a very interesting project for me because again, I'm very excited about storytelling and giving people experiences. So it wasn't fantasy or anything, it was reality based. We, you could imagine that all of them are real and living the next street to you. Uh, and yeah, that was the storytelling aspect. But at the same time, I guess when I say I'm technical, I mean I'm very strong in planning and I approach every project as a problem that needs to be solved. And that's something that allowed me to move to technical position much easier just because at the end of the day, in technical position, you're still dealing with problems and you're finding solutions to them. Programming is very creative in its essence. That's what people don't really think about, I guess, when we talk about programming. But just imagine, like, take a step back. You're writing a set of instructions for a machine to follow. You're literally telling a machine what to do to achieve the results that you want. I find it fascinating. And every year we get more tech, we get new architectural solutions, we get new approaches that people develop that you can explore and make the process more efficient or make uh, your program do something new and amazing. Uh, you can, uh, there are a lot of explorations in AI, for example, when machine starts think for you. Uh, so yeah, I think programming is very creative it's just creative in a bit of different sense than, for example, art or writing. But yeah, um, if you feel inclined to explore this world of technology, uh, then yeah, definitely programming will be a very nice fit for you. I guess the question is, do you like solving problems in a structured approach? If you do, then yes, you will be a good programmer. This is a very interesting question uh, because uh, when I started in the industry, I actually developed two games myself and I published them just to get the experience. And the tricky thing there for me was that I'm not an artist. I cannot draw at all. 
So I had to solve the opposite problem of how you make a game if you're technical and you cannot do art at all. So what I did, uh, spoiler alert, I actually knitted my character because I cannot draw but I can knit. Uh, so I guess the moral here is think about the stuff that you cannot do as a challenge. You cannot program, explore the frameworks that exist that allow you to program visually. Just put blocks together. Also, talk to your friends. Uh, there's always a chance that one of them is actually interested in programming and you can come together and work on a project together. So yeah, um, it should not stop you if you cannot program, but it should inspire you as something to overcome and figure out on your own. There is an interesting thing. Uh, I watched an interview with uh, Hideo Kojima and he said that one of the reasons that he kind of invented the stealth game genre was that the game engines at that time were not strong enough to render a lot of enemies. So he had to convince a player to fight one enemy at the time exploring the level, not because he thought, oh, we need a new genre, but because the engine could not do anything else and he had to adapt. He had to solve this challenge and that's why we have like a new game genre now. Um, I think that's amazing. <laughs>
a lot of learning resources resources now uh, work to create games to help people learn stuff. Um, a lot of um, different art projects are right now are quite technical and gamified in different sense. Look at what hap what's happening in the VR space. Like virtual reality is very big. So what it is, it's an experience, right? But this is an experience that's based in tech. Someone has to write software for all of that. So there are a lot of different jobs where you can apply your skill. You just need to get the skill. First, I love games. I wouldn't be here <laughs> unless that was the truth. Um, but also, I love working with people. What I find really cool about games that the more people you have, the better the product becomes. A while ago, I was at a meetup with an engineer at NASA, and he said this amazing thing that I always keep at the back of my mind. If you have a vision, this vision is actually your boundary. And the more you work with people, the more it moves your boundaries. You get more input. You get more creative input. You get more technical input. You get more experiences input. Uh, and that's why I love working with teams. I also love working with juniors teams specifically because first, they're very inspiring. The people who come in the game industry, they usually want to do amazing things. They're like full of this fire and it's, it's very inspiring. And it allows me to direct them and hopefully make the industry a better place in the future. Uh, so um, being a technical lead is a very good position to be on one hand because you get a chance to inspire other people, but you also get the chance to help industry develop in the direction that you want it to go. Musescore GS um, it's a non-profit organization that runs workshops for women all across Australia. Uh, those are technical workshops. So what we're trying to achieve, we're trying to show the industry to the people who want to get in. It's a bit different than uh, a lot of other technical workshops that actually teach you specific skills. That's not really what we do. Yes, there, there are technical challenges that you complete by the end of the day during the workshop, but the idea there is we all come together, we work together, we have mentors, we have support, we have coffees, we have ice creams, we talk to each other. So I guess the idea there is to show that the industry can be good. There are good things in the technical industry for women, we support each other and we have community that supports us in tech. So I find it very inspiring. I also think that's very important because it's not a secret that we lack women in strong technical positions, uh, especially in the leadership. And uh, for me, it's very important to make sure that uh, in five or 10 years, that will not be the case. That, that's what Muses helped me to do. We have all sorts of people attending our workshops, though officially our workshops are for women and underrepresented groups. We have guys coming over. We have people who just heard about the tech industry and they come in to figure out what, what is the tech industry? What do you do here? We, um, what makes me very happy being in 30 plus age bracket and starting my career in tech after 30 is that we actually have a lot of people um, who want to change their careers. Like they're looking for a change. They're looking to change the industry that they work in. Uh, so we have people that have no technical background, but they're considering, hmm, maybe writing programs is something that I can do. And we are very happy to show them that, yes, you can do it. <laughs> First, in my personal experience, I had a lot of mentorship and support. 
For me personally, it's very important to give back because I feel like when I train another person, when I mentor another person, I kind of give back to the people who mentorship me, who helped me through the process. And also, let's be fair, the industry is, can be scary sometimes. And quite often when we have a technical meeting, I'm the only woman in the room or maybe there is another woman in the room and uh, there are 10 guys. Uh, this can be scary at some point. And that's where I think community can come to help. That's where we can help. Yes, you may be the only female developer at your team, but here are seven other female developers that are also in their teams. So maybe uh, you Maybe you need support from people who are in the same shoes as you. And that's what community helps with. Uh, you can come in, uh, you can talk to people like, I have this experience, um, I'm not sure how do I feel about it, what do you think? And you can get honest feedback, like, maybe it's better to solve this problem with this set of tools first. That's like mentorship, technical mentorship. But at the same time, you get an emotional support. like. I feel like I work with this jerk and someone else is like, yeah, he is a jerk. So <laughs> I know it sounds a bit silly, but this is an emotional support that's very important to get. And we as women in the industry, quite often being the only female person in the room, do not often get. So that's, that's where community helps you. You see the people that are in the same shoes and you can you can get their feedback on different situations and you can get their emotional support to see that the struggles that you're going through are not yours only. Someone else already had this problem and maybe they actually found a good solution for this problem and they're happy to share it with you. Let's start with difference between mentorship and sponsorship because people quite often don't see those as two different roles and they are two different roles. So mentor is a person who helps you develop, uh, helps you to develop the skills that you need to be successful. Um, in, um, in the technical role, it's something who has technical background, someone who can literally teach you how to write better code. Sponsor, uh, this is the person who may not be in the same role, but it's a person who is in the same company, who knows about your career's inspirations and can put you forward. Like for example, if I have a problem with a specific framework, I'll go to my mentor and ask them, how do I solve this problem? But when we at the company meeting, some sort of problem comes up, my sponsor will be the person who says, actually, I think Inga can solve this problem. So it's someone who supports you in your career goals and can speak up when there is a task that you can take. Uh, so this is the difference between mentor and sponsor. Both are very important, especially for um, women and underrepresented folks in the industry, uh, because it allows it's, it's a way to make sure that you're not get overlooked uh, when we talk about new challenges, new cool tasks or promotions. For the mentors, um, mentor plays um, first. You don't have to have only one mentor. You can have several mentors from several different industries. Like right now, I have a couple of mentors. I have a career mentor, a person who actually uh, helps me to plan my career and tells me like, you probably need to get this course, you probably need to learn this, you probably need to read this book. At the same time, I have a technical mentor who I come with, um, I need to test this super complicated thing, how do I approach it? And he'll say like, here is the architectural approach that people are using right now, or here is the cool, um, cool new tool that you can use. So mentors are people who support you, uh, in your career development and in your technical development. They don't have to work at the same company as you, uh, but it's very important to find them because at, all of us need support at some point in our lives. And to find mentor, um, first, talk to people. 
there are a lot of different industry events. Um, most of them have now moved offline. But yeah, go to a meetup, uh, join a meetup, uh, go to the online meeting, chat to people, um, come to Muses workshops, we'll find a mentor for you. Um, so yeah, look for mentors um, everywhere. Because there are a lot of people who actually want to share their knowledge. Um, I've, I never had problems finding mentors. Maybe I'm lucky, <laughs> that's, that's also a possibility. But I met a lot of people who want to give back. And that's what mentorship is. You just, someone trained you and now you're giving back, training someone else. It requires commitment. Uh, I talked a lot about career planning and that's a big part of that. Um, I guess a lot of people who come to the game development industry, they're like, I love playing games. I want to make a game. And that's where it ends. You need to understand what you want to achieve. Look for people who inspire you in the industry. Uh, like uh, In this series of workshops, you'll see a lot of people who can inspire you. Look at their journeys. Contact them, ask them questions. Like if a person messages me on LinkedIn asking me on what's, what should be the next step of my career? Is it hard to do this? Um, is it hard to learn this framework? I will always answer because I think it's very cool that they're asking questions. I love when people ask questions. So plan your career, work hard, look for mentorships, don't forget about sponsors, and yes, you will make a career in game development. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I hope this video inspires you to do amazing things in games and your careers. And I cannot wait for your projects. Let me know how they go. <laughs>